Let me begin by thanking Consumers International and uh, Director General Elena Laurent for this opportunity to talk about how to accelerate the transition towards more sustainable consumption patterns. Consumers International, as a co-lead of the Consumers Information Programme for Sustainable Consumption and Production, is an important partner for UNEP, and I congratulate the organisation and all its members on 60 years of consumer protection and advocacy. The work of Consumers International on Sustainable Consumption and Production, or SCP, has never been more important. That's because we are in the middle of three planetary crises, the climate crisis, the biodiversity and nature crisis, and the waste and pollution crisis. Carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are at their highest for the past 800,000 years, raising global temperatures and bringing forest fires, um, as well as heat waves, droughts and floods. Humanity has altered three quarters of the planet's surface and placed the existence of one million species in doubt. The erosion of wild spaces combined with unsustainable exploitation of species is linked to the emergence of zoonotic diseases such as COVID-19, which is causing such misery and chaos around the globe. And we have polluted our air, our lands, our waters. Some 8 million tons of plastics, for example, end up in the oceans every year. Only four of the world's 40 plus megacities have the air quality that reaches the World Health Organization, WHO, standards. The result is that millions of people die prematurely each year. So we have much work to do. These three crises, because these three crises, they have a common cause. Humanity's relentless extraction, use and discarding of natural resources. Put simply, we are consuming the planet away from beneath our feet. Consumption patterns are particularly problematic in the food, in the tourism and building sectors. These sectors together amount for around 53% of humanity's contribution to energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. Food consumption causes an estimated 40% of biodiversity loss, with diets tending towards animal protein and the highly processed foods. Food wastes and loss remains a massive issue. The global timber trade, meanwhile, causes a loss of ecosystem services estimated to about 1.5 trillion US dollars a year. We must also be clear that the growing use of natural resources is unequal, with material footprint in high-income countries over 13 times higher than low-income countries. If everyone consumed like an average US citizen, we would need the equivalent of five planets. It gets worse as wealth rises, with the richest emitting 1% more than the combined share of the poorest 50%. Colleagues, sustainable consumption and production is not an option. It is a must. As the world moves towards 10 billion people and as our incomes rise, we are going to see more demand on dwindling resources. On current trends, the use of natural resources will double by 2050, including a 60% increase in food production. Without strong action on the sustainable consumption and production, we will miss the Paris ambition of holding warming to well under 2 degrees Celsius and limiting further climate devastation. So we must reset our relationship with nature through SCP and other efforts to live within planetary limits. This means we must all stretch our ambitions and actions with an onus on governments to use the pandemic recovery stimulus packages to launch the systemic changes that will line our economies up with the 2030 Agenda, the Paris Agreement and the post-2020 Biodiversity Accord that we will negotiate next year. These agreements are critical to enable that we can live sustainably on our planet. But we are here to talk about the role that consumers have of consumer groups, which will be critical and pivotal to shift to sustainable consumption and production. So please allow me to lay out three actions that you can take so that we all 
can help consumers begin to shift towards sustainability. First, we need to turn the groundswell of awareness that we know is there into action through better consumer information. As we have seen in the media, on the streets, in the boardrooms, in the classrooms, awareness of environmental problems we face has in fact never been higher. But this awareness has been slow to translate into action. In a 2019 survey in 25 countries, 64% of the respondents said that they wanted to reduce their impact on the environment and nature. However, research has consistently identified a gap between purchase intentions and behavior. Most people make decisions based on price, accessibility, effectiveness, and other criteria like trends, culture, and well-being. The pandemic may help change this picture as it has led to an increase of consumers concerned about ethical consumption. In the UK, for example, over 19 million people are cooking from scratch and 17 million are throwing away less food. This is due to the lockdown and people staying at home, but it can also help spark a longer term shift in consumption behaviours and lifestyles. To tap into this growing movement and willingness to act, consumer information is critical. It enables governments and businesses and concerned individuals to make better choices. And this is particularly important given concerns over greenwashing and consumers might be misled if information is not clear and relevant. Consumer groups are a key ally to foster credible and clear consumer information because they oversee consumers' rights and interests and can put significant pressure on information providers. To increase the impact of consumer information tools, we need to drastically increase their market penetration. We need to advocate for global use of consumer information for governments, for businesses and individuals. Until the sustainable option is a default, we must keep driving home the message and increase efforts to provide consumers with the information they need to make the right choices. That was my first point. Let me get to the second. Two, we need to engage the younger generation. We've all seen the way that younger generations are more engaged. In the US, when surveyed, millennials are twice as likely as baby boomers to say that they are definitely or probably changing their habits to reduce the impact on the environment. They're also willing to pay more for products that contain environmentally friendly or sustainable ingredients, or products that have a social responsibility uh, embodied within them. These young people will be the policy makers and the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. They will invent new ways of meeting our needs while protecting the environment and the future of humanity. Therefore, UNEP has launched several initiatives on how to further engage with the younger generations and how to learn from them. Our Playing for the Planet Alliance, for example, brings together 30 of the most globally influential video game companies, together with smaller studios of immense creativity, to engage and activate more than 1 billion video gamers worldwide, in particular by inserting green nudges into games. We must all strive to empower youth to take the actions needed to transit towards more sustainable lifestyles. So my second point was engage the next generation. And my third point deals with using digital technology to change behavior. We are in the middle of the fastest disruption in human history. According to the World Economic Forum, 60% of the global GDP will be digitalized by 2022. Embracing digitalization for collaboration, for innovation, education, is the best way to increase the adoption and impact on sustainable lifestyles. There are already apps that can allow people to exchange used items, buy soon to expire foods cheaply, share rides and so much more. For example, many platforms worldwide have reduced food waste by connecting consumers with supermarkets and restaurants who have, well, who have surplus food. These platforms have redistributed tens of millions of ingredients and meals. When we talk about consumer information, we need to also consider how to use blockchain to track goods through the supply chain and to alter their impact and footprint. New technologies can harness the energy of tech-savvy youth 
keen to be part of the solution to environmental challenges, and we must take advantage of this opportunity. Colleagues, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but by strengthening the long-standing partnership between UNEP and Consumers International, we can amplify our collective influence and we can accelerate change. Together, we can build a more transparent marketplace. Together, we can build a cleaner world, free of pollution and harmful products. Together, we can transform our global food system. And in this regard, I am delighted that Consumers International has been named a champion of the UN Food System Summit in 2021. Together, we can ensure consumers rely on clearer and more reliable and more relevant information on sustainability, on driving change in the global marketplace. I thank you again, and to all of you, my deep thanks for your hard work so far. I look forward to closer engagement with Consumers International to intensify and accelerate our progress, the progress we have made so far moving ahead. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and decisions. Thank you.